Вон он полетел, сейчас взрыв будет. Ебать! If Kyiv does receive approval from the West to use Western weapons to strike deep into Russian territory, the armed forces of Ukraine will strike 261 military facilities of the Russian armed forces, such as large weapons depots and permanent deployment points of Russian troops. This was reported by the German magazine Der Spiegel, citing analysts from the Institute for War Research. If Kyiv strikes these facilities with Storm Shadow air-launched cruise missiles, their fire damage, according to Western analysts, will significantly complicate Russian military logistics. One of Russia's most important advantages in the conflict is its ability to move troops en masse from safe areas deep within its own territory. If this advantage were to be compromised, it would significantly hinder Russian operations and increase Ukraine's chances of seizing operationally important territory, explained ISW Geodata Group Director George Barros. Earlier, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Kurt Campbell stated that possible deliveries of long-range Atticom's missiles are being actively discussed by American authorities. At the same time, U.S. State Department Representative Matthew Miller previously emphasized that Kyiv does not need Washington's permission for strikes by the Ukrainian armed forces deep into Russia only if they use their weapons on their own territory. In August, the Russian Ministry of Defense demonstrated the operation of the Buk M3 anti-aircraft missile system in the area of a special military operation, which intercepted and destroyed an American Atikms operational tactical missile launched by the Ukrainian armed forces. The loss of Volodar increases the pressure on Ukrainian troops in the Donetsk region who are suffering from a shortage of ammunition and personnel since significant resources are directed at holding positions in the Kursk region, which is in Russian territory, writes The Times. The Russian victory, though largely symbolic, could pave the way for further gains north and east of the city. While those gains are unlikely in the coming months as the rainy season and winter set in, President Putin's apparent military goal of capturing the entire Donetsk and Luhansk regions is moving somewhat closer, the publication said. However, Russian military bloggers did not celebrate the capture of Volodar, as many doubt that the Russian army can quickly advance further into the territory controlled by Ukraine, writes The Times. The publication noted that Volodar is heavily mined, so Russian occupiers need time to clear the city of mines and ammunition that did not explode. In addition, further advancement of the Russian Federation will be impeded by Ukrainian defense positions to the northeast of the city. Russia's capture of Volodar is unlikely to fundamentally change the course of offensive operations in the west of Donetsk Oblast, mainly because Volodar is not a particularly important logistical hub and also because Russian troops control most of the main roads leading to Volodar. The Institute for the Study of War emphasized, 
At the same time, the Times added that in order to capture Pokrovsk, the Russian invaders must maneuver in open terrain for about 30 kilometers. The city is of strategic importance due to its railway connection, and this means that an assault on Pokrovsk, which is under constant shelling by the Russian Federation, is unlikely, the publication's analysts assured. As reported, the Ukrainian Defense Forces have withdrawn from the city of Volodar in Donetsk Oblast. The Kortitsia Special Operations Command added that as a result of the enemy's actions, there is a threat of encirclement of the city. At the same time, the commander of the battalion of the strike UCAV Achilles of the 92nd Separate Assault Brigade, named after Ivan Sirko, Yuri Fedorenko, stated that the loss of Volodar is not critical for Ukraine. At the same time, he noted that Russia continues to gradually implement the plan for the occupation of Ukrainian territory. The enemy will try to advance in the near future by means of a creeping offensive, one way or another, with losses that are disproportionate to the results they receive on the battlefield. As for the loss of certain populated areas, they are determined in particular by military expediency and, most importantly, by preserving the lives and health of our servicemen, Fedorenko noted.